Hello, it's Warren Eggers from the International Colorist Academy. There's a little tip here on tracking. This is a music video I worked on recently, and what happens, um, a lot of iPads and iPhones come in over her vision, so we need to track this iPad, and if you do it in the normal window mode, what is going to happen is that it will feature lots of tracking features on him and not on the actual frame, so you get a lot of warping and distortion. So the best thing to do is to reset that tracking that you've done there. Turn off your window. So if you go to your window palette, there's the window I labeled. Turn that off. Then go back to the tracker. And instead of tracking in a cloud track, I use point tracker here. That enables me to click down the bottom here and select a point. I get a blue cross and I'm going to put that up there. And I'm going to select another cross here. There. And I'm going to put four of these on, so it's going to give it a good chance to track, putting them in each corner of the, the iPad, the iPad frame. Once I've done that, I then need to re-enable my shape. By doing that, the shape comes back. It's exactly the same size. I can then go to the tracking palette. I can now track backwards based on that tracking data, those four crosses. All I now need to do is to go into frame mode and find my last good keyframe. I'm stepping backwards with the keyboard. So this tracking here is not any good, so I need to delete it. Left click, draw a box up to the last good frame. Three dots here, our options palette. Clear the selected track data. I can then add a keyframe there, step back one frame and just drag the iPad to there. Then the iPad's off the screen, and then all we need to do is take that final keyframe at the top, and we track that like that. So that's a good way of utilizing the point tracker. Thanks for watching.